Counseling Techniques, Envisioning Change, with Sandra Collins and Gina Coe. Clients and counselors may have very different perspectives on what change looks like and how it occurs. So it is important to ask clients about their beliefs and values about change. Envisioning change with the client provides a foundation for setting culturally responsive and client-centered therapeutic directions, which foster hope and motivation for change. Gina, we've been talking about um, moving into more balance in your life and reinforcing the good enough to Gina. And one of the things I'm wondering about as we pick up in this conversation is how you envision change. Because when we looked at the good enough, there were ways, the good enough, Gina, there were ways in which the collectivist environment that you grew up in influenced how you perceived that particular metaphor of being good enough. And so I'm curious about what that cultural context might mean for how you envision change. Mm -hmm. Very good question, Sandra. I mean, part of my upbringing is um, the message is go do it, right? Go, 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 go. And maybe not so much for me personally, but for my peers and my friends who are Asian growing up, it's like, go and get the good grades. You know, 95% is not enough. We needed to get a, you need to get 100%. Some, some of my friends' parents have said that to them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the doing, right? Take action. Mm -hmm. So I think with, uh, and then for myself, it wasn't until I was a young adult, I looked at my uh, tuition bill. Um, when I was 17, 18, I realized, oh my goodness, I'm paying for my education. I'm not going to be not trying anymore and not going to be kind of, you know, not paying attention to my learning. So um, th that change took uh, came about because I decided to take action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of the things then is the kind of, um, once you have a sense of what needs to happen is just shifting into the do it. In our previous session, we talked about saying yes. <laughs> it's kind of, for me, I'm making a connection there. Would you make that same connection? Yeah, very much so. And now that we've had some time between our last session and this session, um, you know, there could be a, a double-edged sword to say yes to, right? I, I could be saying yes to too much, too many things. I mean, even when we look at the dominant kind of messages, it, it, we, if, when we don't even consider intersectionality towards women, you know, mm -hmm. for example, you need to have a, nowadays a great career, earn good money. If you have children, take care of your children, be the one cooking and cleaning, grocery shopping and tend to work and, you know, save up for holidays. So to, to be a superwoman, for example, right? So yeah, so there are there are lots of cultural expectations, I think, in the dominant culture. And also, you've talked about some of them in the Asian culture, where there could be that tendency for the say yes and just do it to be like pushing yourself out of balance as you try to be all of these things so are there other elements about how you view change that might be helpful in terms of counteracting that tendency to tip into meeting all those other expectations i think uh, going back to the conversation about like for example feeling if I notice I'm feeling more fatigued now, right? It's it's maybe the last week or so, it's been too much. I've, I've taken action in many areas of my life, right? Um, then I need to slow it down. And then I need to, um, yeah, observe my body, my energy level, uh, and it's okay to take a break as well, right? Maybe, for example, that week, I'm not going to say yes to the workout in terms of maybe it wouldn't be as long. Maybe I can, you know, leave earlier or, or yeah, having more alone, solitary time to, re, to feel more um, uh, recharged, right? Hmm. 
So one thing that um, tweaked for me, we have this shared friend, Gina Wong, and um, some of her work is around, has been around reflective practice. And I just remember her talking about reflection um, in action and on action and after action. I'm not using the correct terminology there, but the idea that um, of um, moving, which is what you're saying with the action, and yet bringing in that reflective piece that says, okay, what's happening right now in the moment for me, what's happening after I've engaged in this, what's happening kind of as I look back over my whole week, that reflective practice piece. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yes, I recall I recall um, learning uh, uh, from Gina in terms of reflective practice. Yeah. So how do you think that piece might fit or not fit with what you just um, said around change? Would that be a helpful addition or not? Mm -hmm. So maybe um, maybe it's a weekly being intentional to take some time, maybe to, to journal a little bit about my, for example, it could be a Sunday evening where I reflect on the past week, right? What, what everything I was able to achieve, or I said yes to, I said no to, we, we configure my calendar, like how did it go, right? So and maybe it's also about if my spouse, asks me yeah sometimes he does at 7 30 p.m or 8 p.m do you want to go to the gym right maybe in those moments I'll say not tonight but can we try going a little earlier another time right so so being assertive around how, how that workout looks and mm -hmm. how much time in terms of, as I said earlier to stay at the gym right mm. We've talked about a lot about self-care and part of what I'm hearing in this is that the, along with the taking action and saying yes, part of change for you is um, also attending to the, is this going to be a good yes for me? <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. Is this going to be a good yes? Because if we're too rigid, right? If I said, if I look at my my week, oh my goodness, today is already Sunday and I haven't gone to the gym. And uh, if the suggestion is to go to the gym at 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. and tomorrow I have a long day, that might not be a good yes. That may be actually, you know what, I'm going to be kind to myself. I'm going to decline. And to, next week is a new week. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we loop back to the beginning when you talked about um, change being centered in the do it, um, you know, just do it, how would you modify that message to fit with kind of your broader conversation, our broader conversation here around what change might look like? Mm -hmm. I think... Yes, I think the mantra, the the yes, yes, say yes, and 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 do it still helps, right? Especially when, when I'm focused on specific goals. Maybe I'll add another piece, and I'm allowed, or and I can be flexible, right? Going back to the piece where you know we, I I I feel like, I, I, in my life now, you know, rigidity doesn't serve, right? It doesn't serve me. So again. When when I I notice that it's, it's actually saying yes isn't serving me maybe I'm not it's not serving me as a therapist or as a mom or right as an instructor podcast host I'm gonna say not yes or maybe next time right yeah I think that's really um, insightful Gina because one of the risks of a say yes mantra and you mentioned that when you made the mantra is that. Um, what if I say yes to too many things and then I get out of balance again and so um, say yes and have permission to say no mm. is a whole different um, message to yourself I like that yeah say yes and and have permission to say no 